hi it's grace welcome back to my channel i hope that you're all doing really really well today i'm coming at you with a quick casual video where you're going to choose what book i should read this month i do this every month and i love it you always pick out the best books for me and yes very excited i am coming at you no makeup on but a lot of sweat which should balance out because the weather is actually stunning for once um so i've just been in the garden sunbathing but then i realized i needed to film this video so I uh, don't have any trousers on, so let's keep let's keep everything up here. Yeah, so like I say, I do this video every month. I choose five books off my TBR, talk to you about kind of why I want to read them, why they're on my TBR, and then in the comments, you lot choose which one you want to see me read the most this month, and I will I will come through. I will read it for you, and then we can talk about it in my wrap up. I don't think you've given me a dud yet. I think every book that has been chosen in this video series has been at least a four star so let's keep let's keep up that momentum and let's choose my june read so last month i did it like a little bit differently because it was an um, aapi heritage month and so i chose five books that i kind of wanted to get to them all and i think i did actually read them all but i just got you to kind of prioritize i would say this month is more of like a i describe it as like a possibility pile these are all books that i would like to get to in this month but i know that i have a lot of other reading videos planned like i'm gonna read the women's shortlist so that'll be quite a lot of reading and i have some other kind of vlogs in the works but all of these books are in some way lgbt plus because it is obviously pride month and i didn't end up being able to do the queer lit readathon because i didn't realize it was so early in the month and i was just not prepared but there's still a lot of books on my tbr that some way link into pride that i'm really looking forward to reading um and so yeah like i say it's kind of a possibility pile it's kind of a like i'd like to get to them all but i know i might not so tell me which one i need to definitely get to okay so let's get into the stack in no particular order so the first book that is a possibility for me this month is giovanni's room by james baldwin this is a really cute little copy of this book um so i have read if beale street could talk by james baldwin which actually now that i mention it, i think that was one of the ones that you picked for me i think that might have been like february's you choose what i read um and i love that book I loved his writing. I just loved, again, that was a really short book. It packed such a punch. It was so emotionally effective. But I think the thing I loved most was like his prose, just the absolute like art of the way he wrote, the way he writes. And so I wanted to pick up more James Baldwin. And so I got Giovanni's Room because that is like, I feel like one of the most famous of his fictions. Um, and also I really want to watch, watch. I really want to read um, Swimming in the Dark, which is a like modern kind of i don't know if it's i don't think it's like a retelling but i think it might use some of the characters from giovanni's room or it's influenced by them but i know a lot of people love that book and so i want to read that i nearly picked that up but then i was like oh i should read giovanni's room first so this is about david um who meets giovanni in a bohemian bar and is swept into a passionate love affair it says but his girlfriend's re return to paris destroys everything unable to admit the truth david pretends the liaison never happened while giovanni's life descends into tragedy so obviously this is a love story between two men um i'm not sure when it was written this was originally published in 1956 um so it's obviously set i imagine maybe in the 50s and in paris i love books set in paris i mean i know that's like kind of cliche but i just do i especially think like a love story a tragic love story in paris there's just such a like melodrama to that in a way that i really really enjoy um and yeah i think this is gonna be like i say a tragic love story um there's gonna be like sadness but then also maybe a little bit of romance as the french definitely would not say and I think this is quite like an important book in terms of like the history of queer writing. I think, you know, it's obviously like a very influential book in the way that I was saying, Swimming in the Dark is kind of a modern take on that. And yeah, I just don't know anyone who's not like this. And I think knowing that I love, well, believing that I love James Baldwin's writing, going to one of his more popular works will really interest me. And I'm on a bit of a like long-term literary love story hype where like, I don't read like traditional romance but I love reading about love in books especially when it's done well this one as I say sounds like it might be a bit tragic but I can deal with that and yeah I honestly just think this copy is so cute so yes this is option number one have you read it would you like to see me read it please do let me know okay next we have Milk Fed by Melissa Broder 
I have been wanting to read this since it came out. This came out in February. I love this cover. I think it's so cool. But I only read the Pisces in February, which was Melissa Broder's first novel. Have I done that thing again where every book on here I've already read by the author? No, I haven't. Okay. So yeah, I read the Pisces in February, which obviously has been out for a few years. And I loved it. Like it totally took me by surprise. I've said it a million times, but I expected that book to be really cynical and cold and kind of, I don't know, maybe a bit mean spirited, but actually I found it so intelligent, like emotionally intelligent. I found it like fun and funny, but also like full of ideas. And yeah, it just made me desperate to read more from Melissa Broder. And as I say, this is her new one. So this is about um, a woman called Rachel. So she's 24, a lapsed Jew who has made calorie restriction her religion. So I think she like basically is suffering from an eating disorder. I know I've seen a few people say this book is like really, really triggering. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. Um, and then she meets Miriam, who is an Orthodox Jewish woman. Um, it says she's intent upon feeding her. And I think Rachel becomes kind of obsessed with Miriam. I mean, this book was talked about in terms of it being like a depiction of a lesbian relationship. So I imagine Rachel and Miriam in like, our relationship if I'm wrong and that isn't what this book's about then I apologize um I never like to know too much about books before I read it but yeah it's about this like obsessive relationship as far as I know between Rachel and Miriam and obviously a lot about foods and appetites and like sexual desire sexuality and sex was definitely something that came up a lot in the Pisces um Melissa Broder has a way of writing about not even just sex like bodily functions but particularly sex in like a very visceral way and to be honest that wasn't something I necessarily like loved in an isolated way like I'm not like oh yeah I love reading about like intense descriptions of a woman having sex with a merman when she's on her period but I think it just kind of is part and parcel of her style and I did find that book as a whole really engaging um, I'm also really interested in reading about like female female relationships whether that be romantic or not um, and that sort of obsessive you know there's always something intriguing when you know you're going to read a book that's about kind of someone becoming obsessed with someone else and entering into quite an intense relationship i would definitely say that i've read books before that rely too much on a kind of stereotypical trope of like toxic female friendship which isn't something that i like so i'm hoping this is like a little bit more nuanced also really interested in um reading about food um and about appetite and women's relationship to food i think that is and endlessly kind of there's just so much to say on that topic right it's such a big part of our society kind of unfortunately it's something that basically every woman if not every person I know has struggled with and I think that because it's not something I'm going to find like really really triggering I'm interested to read more about that I'm kind of hoping this book is going to give me what supper club by Laura Williams just didn't quite like that book was a lot about appetite and food and a very toxic female friendship but it wasn't quite perfect for me so yeah I just really love her style a girl I saw on Instagram had also read the Pisces at a similar time to me and then this and she was like it's one of my new favorite authors so I am very looking forward to it I am very looking forward to it sure like I say I did actually find the Pisces quite funny I think Melissa Broder is good at writing very like authentic contemporary female characters um if in a very specific kind of privileged white way but yes have you read it would you like me to read it let me know then we have a book that I have had on my TBR well my like mental TBR for so so long um and it is Tales of the City by Armistead Mopan so this is the first in a series um set in San Francisco that's kind of like a like a drama and it says An, a naive young secretary forsakes Cleveland for San Francisco tumbling headlong into the brave new world of laundromat Lothario's cutthroat debutantes and jockey shorts dance contests so like I say, I've never read any Mopan before, but my boss absolutely loves these books. They're some of her favourite books ever, and she was like, oh, I can't believe you've never read them before. Obviously, they've been made into, like, a TV series and all that kind of thing. They're, like, very much in the canon, and I love those sorts of um, very, like, comic but very warm-hearted um, stories. I'm kind of getting a bit more into series in a way that I guess most... Of literary fiction doesn't really come in series but I am someone who gets attached to characters I get attached to you know settings and writing styles so I do quite like the idea of finding a new series that is my favorite I'm really interested in reading more about San Francisco as a place I've read a couple of San Fran books this year I think this initially started like actually as a serialized thing which I like and I don't know I'm just looking for something like a little bit 
warm at the minute like not necessarily like light-hearted in a sense of i don't know like thin do you know what i mean but just something that isn't completely heavy um so this was an initially published in 1980 and the reason it kind of like came back into my mind is because i was watching one of simon savage's videos that he did recently in his like series um of book five years on booktube videos and one of them was like the books i think it was in the books that have mean, meant the most to him over every decade of his life and he talks about um how much he loves this and um feeling like acceptance and just yeah i've been meaning to read it for ages and i love a comic author i love a like drama with a lot of characters i'm excited about this have you read it should i read it should i read it this month please do let me know next up is memorial by brian washington this is another book that has been lamenting on my shelves since it came out in january well i think i got it for my birthday in february um but i know a lot of people were reading it in january when it came out and i just have not i absolutely love this cover i think it's so like i don't know just minimalist and cool and i love the color palette anyway i've been really excited to read this book because i have read lot which is brian washington's short stories and i really liked it but it wasn't um perfect for me i think on the one hand because i can tend to struggle with short stories but um yeah i don't know i liked his writing style something for me there i don't know i couldn't get as much cohesion perhaps i would have liked which is what happens in short stories although they were interlinked but i've been really looking forward to this novel and i know a lot of people have loved it so this is about um a young couple benson and mike so they've been together for a few years um and it says but now they're not sure why they're still a couple there's the sex sure and the meals and while they love each other but then mike finds out that his estranged father he lives in osaka in japan um is dying so mike goes back to japan to see his father but he's already arranged with his mother that she'll come over from japan but mike has to leave to see his father and so his mother is left with benson and yeah they're kind of now these like unconventional roommates for a while and have to get on with life and i just think that's such an interesting way to approach a romantic relationship like as i was saying i love stories that like are about love that center a relationship in a way that I'm hoping has some levity but also you know looks at like real issues about being in a relationship i also think you often read about um like burgeoning like new relationships or you read about the breakdown of like relationships that have been together people who've been married for you know decades and i like the idea of you know a relationship where you're a few years in which is i mean i do still know i'm in a relationship with my boyfriend but you know i mean that part of a relationship i think that's really interesting and yeah adding you know a story about a relationship but where the couple it sounds like aren't necessarily going to be on the page together um and having to deal with the mother being there i'm really really interested in that i have heard that the food writing in here is amazing and that is something that i adore i love really good food writing um i think obviously we're going to be in japan but then also in america and i read i think i read part of this novel or maybe serialized i swear i've read a short story by brian washington about someone meeting their boyfriend's mother and i think it was in like the washington post or the new yorker or something and i loved it it was a couple of years ago now and i can't i'm not sure if that was part of this or if that was different but anyway i really enjoyed that and i'm excited to read this should i read it this month have you read it you tell me i just realized i haven't even picked up the fifth book and I don't know where it is so editing grace can just chuck a photo in and I'll just talk about it so the fifth option for this month is small beauty by Jia King Wilson Yang um this is another book that has come recommended to me by Han from let's talk about books baby she absolutely loves this book um and I added it to like my TBR ages ago because yeah she made it sound amazing so this is about a mixed race trans girl living in Canada I believe and grieving the loss of her cousin yeah it says um you know may is navigating racism and transphobia and her desire for community as she takes an opportunity to leave the city and revisit a town from her family's past and it says she's kind of dealing with her own anger and trauma but also her family's like queer history and so yeah this book sounds super interesting to me for a lot of reasons i really want to read more trans authors um and this sounds like a really interesting take on that not only looking at um a trans main character and navigating transphobia but also how that intersects with racism being a mixed race character also i like books about um grief it can sometimes be a bit i don't know i don't love i find reading about grief um like in a very emotionally 
taxing thing probably like the most I don't know I read a lot of like gory stuff or I read a lot of like other ways depressing stuff but I don't know I find like reading about the process of grieving like quite emotionally taxing but often on the other side of that that means that it really works for me and I get very like emotionally invested in the story another one of my favorite uh tropes I guess you'd say is someone like going back to a place that is to do with like their own history so it says that she's going back to a town um from her family's history and I love that like returning to a small town getting into family history um and you know all the things that have happened in your family line before you that you're discovering I don't know I think we coming from a repressed Catholic family, um, there's just always so much stuff the older you get that you realise no one's ever told you and these secrets have been pushed under the rug and I think that's a really interesting thing to explore in literature and it's won a lot of prizes this book so I think the prose is going to be gorgeous. It's not a particularly long book um, and yes, yeah, so I'm just really looking forward to reading that. So let me know, have you read Small Beauty? Would you like me to read it this month? Do you have any thoughts on it? Do you have any thoughts on any of these books please do let me know um and i shall follow you accordingly and whatever book you vote for i will read it and we'll talk about it in a wrap-up so to recap we have giovanni's room by james baldwin milk fed by melissa broder tales of the city by armistead mopan memorial by brian washington and small beauty by jia king wilson yang so please let me know in the comments which one you want me to read but also just any thoughts you have on any of these books whether or not you think i'd like them i love it because it like hypes me up even if i don't get around to reading this month it makes me yeah get to them even sooner this video is always the most foolproof way to get me to read the books that have been on my tbr because as soon as i get like five comments saying how amazing it is I got to pick it up so yes i look forward to speaking to you in the comments thanks so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed it obviously i would love if you subscribed my instagram my story graph will be linked down below and i'll see you in the next one bye